just have to think that you have a video, you have a two-dimensional image for each, uh, each measuring point in your sequence. And now we are coming back uh, to the practical um, side of chlorophyll fluorescence. Fluorchem device, uh, maybe you already noticed that, it offers you a set of protocols. They are predefined. In your device, they are only pump, uh, pump protocols. So using the pump protocols, pulse amplitude modulate, it means that in all protocols you have there, they are using measuring pulses as a basic of the protocol. So even if you don't switch, uh, switch the door uh, or, or close the door of the floor cam and you have it open in the laboratory, you still can measure. Uh, I would um, say there are three, in principle, there are three kind of protocols. You can either have a protocol, um, you can ha either have a protocol short one, called Eviorepam, uh, or typical quenching protocol you see below it. On the right side, you can see the protocols. They are called light curves. Uh, important thing, if you would like to measure correctly these protocols and param define parameters, uh, it's important to perform some kind of dark adaptation of the samples before the measurement. Uh, what is dark adaptation? Uh, you need dark adaptation to measure correct parameters. For example, correct F0, correct FM measurements. Because later from the protocol, from the sequence, you calculate from that another parameters, for example, non-photochemical quenching. How can you adapt your samples? If you have non-imaging device, you have some leaf clips. Uh, in a floor cam, you can dark adapt easily because you have a, it's a bench top system in a light tight box. So you just close the box and leave the sample there uh, for some, some time. Or uh, you can dark adapt in a dark room. This can happen even to you with your floor cam. If you are performing some kind of long-term experiments uh, and you would like to have a good air exchange or you know that your protocol, uh, there, is a lo there is a long um, light acclimation, for example, during a protocol. So if you, in all cases, you would like to work with the open floor cam, put it to the dark room. It's possible, and the dark adaptation is very recommended before each protocol, because then you measure true calculated parameters. They are well defined in literature, and you can easily refer to them. The big question is, how long you should uh, dark adapt? Um, there exist a lot of studies, and I will send you one paper, recent paper from my friend Hazem Kalai from Poland. Uh, who discuss this issue in the paper. Uh, what I typically say customers, you need something practical. You don't need to adapt for one hour. Uh, maybe the shortest what we have from our experience is approximately five minutes for Arabidopsis. Um, girls have 10 or 15 minutes for most, uh, for most of the other um, plants like tobacco. You can, of course, dark adapt, you can test it. You can dark adapt for different periods and then just measure uh, quantum yield, FV over FM. And um, if you repeatedly measure with the same material, you should see that if the dark adaptation is short, you will not reach uh, standard value. This, this is uh, standard value uh, that is standard for higher plants, 0 0.83, if the plant is healthy. With other organisms like algae and cyanobacteria, uh, this is more difficult because they uh, do not have so, so standardized quantum yield of photosystem 2. Uh, but the test can be done the same way. Just repeat the experiment, uh, put, the light, uh, put, the, put your sample somewhere under the light, then take it to the floor cam, close it for different periods and test. 
uh, what dark adaptation is necessary to get the highest value of FV over FM measurement. This is a simple test that can be done for different, different species. Uh, what happens for during dark adaptation? Uh, from molecular molecular point of view, uh, first and very fast thing what happens is that simply uh, photosynthetic machinery uh, QA is reoxide because always if, if you have plants somewhere uh, under the light, always some QA is uh, um, um, reduced. So if you, if you put it to the dark, all of these electrons are transferred further. Photosynthesis is still working for, for a certain time and QA, all QA is reoxide. That is a state that is called dark adaptive state. If you, of course, what, but what, what is happening uh, also by uh, as a by-process, uh, if you adapt longer time, then also enzymes can be deactivated, uh, like Rubisco. So uh, we recommend to adapt for minutes. Important thing, practical, uh, during experiments is whatever you decide, for example, if you are screening, of course, you don't want to adapt for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. You would like to adapt for the shortest time as possible. Uh, please always use the same duration for all samples that you have them in the same st state, physiological state. This is important. Um, another step after dark adaptation is a selection of protocols. FloorCam offers you uh, several protocols. For example, uh, of course, there is defined MORS because uh, they are defined for actinic 1 and actinic 2. Uh, again, as a coffee maker, then you don't need to change anything inside. You just select the protocol and you can measure. Uh, the shortest PAM protocol that FloorCam offers is called EV over FM or quantum yield QY. And this is a relatively uh, short experiment. It, it takes only a few seconds to measure it. And the principle of the measurement is that in the beginning, you just measure a uh, dark adapted uh, sample and you just apply measuring pauses, measuring flashes. You can see the blue uh, block beneath the graph. You see that you apply measuring pauses during the whole pro uh, protocol. Uh, if you apply them in dark, then you measure uh, the minimum fluorescence value F0 because the photosynthesis is not is working on the maximum level and you have not uh, overreduced any QA. Everything is just working on the maximum level and you are measuring the minimum fluorescence F0. Then in this protocol, we apply saturating pulse, strong and saturating light. Uh, that is typically lasting for, for 800 milliseconds or one second. And this light is uh, needed to uh, bring the sample to a saturated state, to saturate photosynthesis, and to measure FM or maximum value. Just from, to measure from these two values, F0 and FM, FM you can calculate quantum yield of photosynthesis. Uh, typical... Uh, notation of the quantum yield is FV over FM. The correct name of the parameter is maximum quantum yield uh, of photosystem 2 in the adapted state. Uh, and it can be denoted in papers as FV uh, over FM or uh, QY max. It's calculated like FM minus F0 divided by FM. So you see its relative value. Uh, it's very robust parameter. And in higher plants, it's very, very stable. So it's known that it should have so precise value as 0 0.83. If the value, the, the value is never higher. If the value is higher, it means that the measurement is um, too noisy and the noise plays a role. If you, if you measure higher, higher values than 0 0.83. Uh, if the value is lower, it refers to a kind of stress. And because this is the, really the maximum uh, quantum meal of photosystem 2, it's uh, in certain sense, it's an artificial value. 
because it gives you information about maximum capacity at certain state, at dark adapted state. If this, uh, so typically the parameter is very robust. It's a very um, um, stable. If it's lowered, it means that something very bad is happening to your sample because it means that some there is something really wrong with photosystem tool. Uh, this parameter is uh, not very sensitive um, for some, some treatments because, as I said, it's something artificial, maximum capacity. Okay, so one more very shortly, AVI over FM protocol. It's very fantastic protocol for screening because it's short. You measure two values, F0 and F FM here. Uh, and from these two values, you calculate maximum quantum yield of photosynthesis. That should be very robust value, 0 0.3. Uh, this, this value is, however, not very sensitive. It mostly correlates with a kind of biotic and abiotic stresses. And the uh, down regulation of FV over FN typically refers to some kind of hard stress of your samples. Another protocol, what do, sorry, what do you see here? Uh, it's a quenching protocol. It's uh, one type of the protocol uh, in this field. And a quenching protocol uh, can be divided into three phases, theoretically. The first, fa first phase in the beginning is a dark phase. So in the very beginning, you can see that we measure F0 and Fm value again. Uh, and the reason is to determine maximum quantum yield, because from the maximum quantum yield and these dark adapted values, you later calculate some other values in light adapted state. So the first first phase, short for fa first phase, is a blue one. Uh, you can see the, the blue short uh, bar under the graph, and it is a dark phase. Then there is a light phase. So the plant uh, is illuminated uh, with continuous actinic light. Uh, and in the graph, you typically see initial rise in fluorescence that we already saw a few times today. Uh, this is observed directly after actinic light uh, switched on. And this increase in fluorescence is subsequently quenched by something to a steady state. And it's quenched by uh, photosynthetic or photochemical as well as non-photochemical events. So it's quenched because the photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis is activated and also thermal dissipation is activated. During this light phase, you see the actinic light bar beneath the graph. Uh, there are some more red arrows. These are saturating pauses. So during a light phase, we apply uh, several saturating pauses. And these uh, saturating pauses are there to probe uh, effective uh, um, quantum yield of photosynthesis. And you can probe it in different phases of actinic light in the beginning, somewhere later, later, and finally at steady state. From these uh, saturating pauses, you get the values of Fm, uh, here denoted as L1, L2, L3, it means that this is, these are light adapted values. And from these values, we calculate effective quantum yield of photosynthesis. And they are also used uh, to calculate non-photochemical quenching uh, that is uh, denoted as NPQ or QN. And the last phase, again, you see the blue bar under the graph. It's uh, again, dark phase. Uh, and the fluorescent signal during a dark phase uh, gives you information about relaxation after the light phase. Uh, mostly we uh, uh, are talking about relaxation on non-photochemical quenching, on the heat dissipation. So in dark, the reaction centers are again reopening. Some of them are slowly, some of them faster. So this gives you some more information. Of course, the protocol can be shortened uh, for different purposes, just to phase, uh, phase one and two, just to one dark and one light. And this part can be omitted if you would like to screen a larger amount, amount of samples. Uh, last, 
uh, typical protocol is called, called light curve. In the literature, you can refer to that as rapid light curve. And uh, this serve um, to quantify photosynthetic efficiency and at different light levels. You can see that, again, it contains the uh, initial dark phase where we measure F0, Fm for maximum quantum yield of dark adapted states. And then we apply, we switch actinic light on, and we are changing intensity of actinic light. Uh, this light, uh, one light level, typically in our protocols, uh, it lasts for, for one minute, approximately, because most of the samples uh, are in steady state after 60 seconds. It can be even longer. But the protocol is designed for one minute, but it can be changed. And at the end of each phase, light phase, uh, we apply we apply uh, saturating pauses. So you can see the red uh, red arrows again at the end. And these red arrows stands for saturating pauses again to probe uh, photochemical uh, quenching and non photochemical quenching. Uh, this is a nice screening protocol if you don't know uh, at what actinic light to measure. So you can measure a light curve protocol and then to select uh, one of the phases, intensity of actinic light uh, for, um, for your next measurements. Um, from these protocols, from quenching and a light curve, uh, you can calculate a lot of different parameters. So here is a table of everything you can calculate. You can find this table also in a manual. So I will not go to the details. And here are just few uh, parameters. Uh, they are very widely used. And people talk about that. First of all, they, most of them are easily, uh, has uh, easy explanation. So we already mentioned FV over FM maximum quantum efficiency of photochemistry. Then there is FV over FM prime. This is calculated from light adapted values, and this is maximum efficiency uh, at light adapted states. Um, then uh, there is another value that is uh, typically denoted FQ prime divided by FM prime, and this is uh, effective quantum yield. This is calculated not from F0 value, but from FT value. Uh, so there is a there is a difference between FQ and FV over FM prime. Uh, very oftenly or uh, very uh, often are used or people speak about non photochemical quenching. Uh, non photochemical quenching gives you information about heat dissipation in your sample, and typically if there is some down regulation of photosynthesis. So uh, non-photochemical quenching is another way uh, used to de uh, for the excitation of the absorb absorbed energy. Uh, Non-photochemical quenching, if you see the formula, how it is calculated, it is calculated from FM, dark adapted value, and of, of from FM value that is measured in light. So it can be also measured from quenching protocols and light curve protocols. And you can have another variation of other uh, other parameters like QL, QN, QP, referring to photochemical, non-photochemical quenching, or here QL uh, that estimates a fraction of, of open PS2. So these are the parameters. Uh, more you can find in literature, and I will send more uh, references to that. Uh, just one um, more slide about protocols. Uh, I um, uh, emphasize that it's good to measure dark adaptation, dark adapted value, and you are working with a normal floor cam in laboratory conditions. So I strongly suggest just measure this dark adapted, uh, this dark adapted material. But of course, you can measure also with light adapted material. And this is a protocol uh, on the right side. Typically, it's a kind of short protocol like AV over FM, but in light adapted states. And these are protocols they are used, uh, for example, in plant screen systems. When you are screening hundreds of samples and you don't have really time to dark adapt. So you are uh, then this approach limits you in a number of calculated parameters. So mostly you calculate just uh, effective quantum yields. Um, yeah, this is a typical, typical way how we use it. 
in plant screen system, there is some kind of adaptation uh, tunnel where you adapt light to, uh, for example, if you grow your plants in a greenhouse, then you go to the measuring station and you dark, uh, light adapt uh, in a, for, for the same level of light in a light adaptation tunnel and go to the floor cam for measurement. Okay. Um, some more important points for the measurements. Uh, again, I will repeat, you always need a reference state. As a reference state, uh, this is, uh, with this I mean uh, dark adapted value, dark adapted sample in the beginning. And if you are studying some kind of uh, treatments, always use control, but this is a standard in the lab. Um, it's always to manipulate with your samples the same way. It should have the same history, the, or other words, photosynthetic apparatus should be in the same state in the beginning of the experiment. So for example, I mean um, um, dark adaptation always for a certain time period, like five minutes. Uh, it's also good um, if you measure um, at approximately same time of the day. This is especially important if you have samples from uh, from uh, some kind of circadian rhythm. Um, because during the day, uh, fluorescence parameters and during the night, they they changed, uh, especially they changed a lot. There is a change or some variation of uh, fluorescence parameters after the uh, sunrise, then uh, in the uh, during a midday and before the sun uh, sun dusk they the plants know uh, there will there will be uh, become a dark again so uh, if uh, if the effects you study is uh, it can be hidden in the circadian rhythm but mostly in laboratory condition and with your sample i do not expect that i think you are cultivating in continuous light um okay this is some hardware but you have fixed the hardware in your system yeah here is a example how uh, looks for example the circadian variation of npq uh, or effective quantum yield of course uh, even in, in fd over fm you can see uh, some changes during the day Okay, and here I would like to show you some um, few uh, applications. Uh, how can you use uh, uh, chlorophyll fluorescence? Uh, sorry, uh, animation. Okay, can I go back? Okay, it doesn't matter. The first slide was about uh, diuron application, DCMU. Uh, uh, here we have infection detection by Pseudomonas syringe. Here you, uh, on the upper slide, you can see the control light and down uh, infected samples. And you can see that in some parameters like F0, you don't see the difference, but you can see uh, very, uh, distinct lesions in NPQ. And the last parameter is a parameter they probably uh, just calculated and took from the sequence. So you can even search for uh, some um, heterogeneity or contrast uh, for your measurement, even in the other, other uh, measured uh, images. Here is another, this is a nice uh, expression how on the lemon you cannot see the mold infection, but you can already see it uh, with a chlorophyll fluorescence. Still, it's a lot of hours and days before you see visible symptoms. Uh, another uh, measurement of infection by uh, Pseudomonas syringe. Uh, on the right side, you can see that you can even search for a pattern that can, uh, these are the special graphs when you uh, try to express it as a fingerprint um, in parameters. In some parameters, you can see contrast, but sometimes you can see a nice pattern if you just draw the graphs like this. 
So you put all of the of your parameters to the spider graphs, and you can see what is characteristic for control and for the treatment. Uh, some algae application on plates. So this is a highlight stress uh, applied on algae. So some colonies, they are not able to recover after the highlight stress. This was done uh, just in every over of measurement parameter. Uh, if you are working with some algae, uh, again, different kind of algae, this is a biofilm where you can differentiate different algal species based on uh, based on a chlorophyll fluorescent transient. Uh, this is an experiment that was done. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> Here by my colleague Clara on a phenotyping system. Uh, they were uh, tracking the drought stress in Arabidopsis thaliana for, you can see, a lot of days. And this, uh, I would like to show you to demonstrate that it's every over FM you can see the difference. You can see some contrast between control and treated samples. Only uh, uh, after 19 days, uh, this means that at this stage, the photosynthetic apparatus was already um, damaged uh, and the FVORFM was lowered to less than 0 0.7. But in other parameters, like effective quantum yield, you can see the response of the plants uh, already after a few days. And also non-photochemical quenching increased. So typically, if the photosynthesis is downregulated, you should uh, see increased non-photochemical quenching. OK, this is a video, again, the drought stress in another species in barley plants, uh, effective quantum meals, how you can differentiate. And the culture uh, cultivation comes back after watering.